Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Hi, Ramin. Here we are again. Boy, these Tuesdays roll around pretty quickly, don't they? Oh, good morning. Yes. It's uh, it's nice, like a little child. I look forward to Christmas. and Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. They go by fast. So right. Glad to be right. here. So. <laughs> so if you're watching the show today, I'm your host, Dr. Laurie Davis, with my colleague, Dr. Ramin Modiri. And every Tuesday, we do something about money. Um, money matters. Money does matter. And uh, money matters, meaning money issues, challenges, whatever. So uh, we're here every Tuesday, same time, same station. And Ramin, it's been an exciting week. Uh, we've had a lot of things happen with the show. Uh, we're presently streaming live on Lori Davis' Facebook page, uh, my two YouTube channels, Lori Davis Show Host, Five Minutes to No Limits. And yesterday we were added to Twitter and um, LinkedIn are streaming our show live. And of course, all the other platforms, the Disability Channel and um, your home TV. We don't stream live, but our shows get archived and they go out and then they post them. So it's um, it's been a really great two months. We've had a lot of growth and that's a good thing, right? Absolutely. It's awesome. So listen, let's just talk about the weather for a minute, because I think last night it was hotter in Alberta than it was in some places in California. And we know California is having a big heat wave right now. Yes. <laughs> What's the temperature where you are? Well, um, today is going to be in the 80s, but tomorrow we're going to be, in, well, Fahrenheit, tomorrow will be 92. Right. Oh, well, that's not bad. That's not yeah, bad at all, 92 right? For, I mean, South Orange County is pretty hot. If you go to Palm Spring, you know, oh. they're in hundreds. Oh, two record-breaking. Two. It was even on our news. Wow. Two record-breaking temperatures in Palm Springs. 124 and 124 or 123. Whoop. Prince will be uh, frying his feet out there. I'm going to tease him about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what have you got in store for us today? I'm excited. I've got my notebook here and my pen because I always take notes when you're talking. And um, what have you got on the docket for us today? Well, you know, um, I'll share a story. I've been blessed during my 40-year career to come across uh, some very successful people. And uh, one of the things I talk, I want to talk about today is about billionaires Ooh. and their habits, their mindset, how you can become a billionaire, what differentiates them from, you know, ordinary person. And it's mm -hmm. amazing it's such a small degree of difference. And that's what we will, I have about 12 things that I learned, the qualities that I've seen. And I would uh, obviously love to hear your take because you've worked with, with the belief system, with the uh, achieving prosperity mindset. So it will be, a, I think it will be exciting, uh, exciting conversation we'll have. So um, hey. I think, go ahead. Yeah. What's that? Now, go ahead. I thought you had something. Oh, no, I just wanted to let everybody know that, no, we did not coordinate our outfits. <laughs> yeah, right? that's right. This just happens. I go in, I choose what I'm going to wear, then I put the banners up to colors that match and look at, and look at you here today with your blue collar, not literally <laughs> blue collar worker, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, a, I'm anxious to hear this because... Um, when you shared the seven, a couple of weeks ago, you shared a list of seven things that are required, um, you know, to be a prosperous investor or trader. And, you know, you shared things like self-awareness, patience, discipline. And I just, when you're talking, I'm always connecting it to other aspects of our life because right. it can apply to other aspects of our life. But sometimes we don't know how to make that connection. And I have a story around that, just a fun story about a former client. I had this client who, you know, was in a really dark place and a uh, husband had passed away and she had no money and she was on welfare. And um, so one of the exercises we did was um, name a person that you respect and admire. And like you said, you've got some billionaire friends that you have spent time with. 
And so she put down Oprah Winfrey as the person she respected and admired. Right. And the exercise is list 10 things about your person that you chose that makes them special. So they write the 10 things and then, and you've done this exercise yourself. And then they have to check off, well, how many qual of those qualities do you have? So she checked off all 10. And I said, well, excuse me then, why, you know, let's look at that. You have the same ingredients as Oprah Winfrey. Hmm. And look where you are and look where she is. So what's going on? He said, I have to really think about that. I think I've just wasted a lot of time and made some not great decisions. I said, okay. The next day the phone rang and it was her. And I picked up the phone and I said, oh, I have waited years to get a phone call from Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> and she just wanted to share with me some big decisions she had made in that last 24 hours about her lifestyle and how she ended up there and why she needed to change it. Because after all, she had the same qualities as Oprah Winfrey. That's right. <laughs> So we're, I think we're going to discover some of that today. So back to you. Awesome. Yes. Um, you know, in my uh, career, my 40 year career, some of the, the, the best and quality times I've had, I, uh, it's been while I've been serving on the, on the boards of, uh, some of the, uh, nonprofit organization and foundations. And one of the blessings I had, I, I, I served in the probably the most respected uh, a global investment foundation. And I um, served in a variety of positions, but the, the, the best times and the best quality of the time that I had was serving as a chair of education for 11 years. And during that time, I was, again, it was volunteering, so I never got paid but it was the most rewarding time that I had. And during that time, I traveled around the world. I met with the heads of the central banks. With the, I traveled to places that I was uh, welcomed with open arms. I, I visited some of the, uh, the oldest stock exchanges in the world, private tours. So there was a lot of connections and a lot of appreciation. And during that time, one of the things that I, I came across, and this is uh, advice or, you know, just a sharing of some of my experiences with, especially with uh, up and coming, you know, our new generation, our young college students or graduating students that they always think of things in a monetary, uh, as far as like pricing things, how much do I get paid, rather than thinking of the the value they receive for their time. So although I did not receive a penny, it was the, the most rewarding uh, experience that I had and the connections that I made. So one of my responsibilities for those 11 years was hosting events. And I will bring with our organization, I will be in charge bringing the guests. And during that time, I had some of the most amazing guests uh, talk about Nobel Prize winners. I had uh, some of the most influential people in economy and finance and politics, but also including some um, billionaire hedge fund managers, portfolio managers, CEOs. And it allowed me to get really connected with them on a personal um, on a, uh, on a personal base. And that's what I thought, um, why don't we share what I learned from just you know having that connection with them. So with that in mind, uh, I wanna give you some statistics. So that's something, you know, when you think about billionaires, it's, you know, we think about millionaires, we used to think, oh, my God, how far-fetched that was. But, you know, believe it or not, nowadays with the real estate and your retirement account, a lot of people have achieved being a millionaire. So well, billionaires like a thousand times millionaires. So how did they get there? Um, 
one of the statistics is as of April, Forbes comes out with these billionaire list. Believe it or not, there's a 2,781 billionaires around the globe. And majority wow. of them are, United States has the highest number, but the fastest growing, you know, China is second and they are fast growing. So for our audience, if you're ever interested, you like numbers, Bloomberg has a live list of the billionaires. So I'm going to give you the top 10 as of hot from the you know, press as of last night or yeah. the richest people in the world as of last night. So number one, it might not be a big surprise, it's Elon Musk. From Tesla and his wealth is at $267 billion. It's larger than probably many countries, and that's his wealth. The second person not far behind is Jeff Bezos of Amazon, which is at $221 billion. Then we got uh, Bernard Arnault from LVMH. He is the only non American in top 10. He's French. And if you think of Louis Vuitton and Dom Prion, well, he is the, the, the owner and the CEO of the LVMH. Then we have our, we talked about Facebook and Meta, it's Mark Zuckerberg, and his wealth is at 190, uh, up at $188 billion. Um, the fifth person is Larry Page from Google. And I want to give you the amounts. Um, so they're in the billion. So then we have Steve Ballmer from Microsoft. Then we have uh, Larry Ellison from Oracle. Uh, Bill Gates, for the longest time, was the wealthiest man in the world with the Microsoft. He's at 159 billion. Then Sergey Brin, another Google founder. And then uh, the tenth one is Warren Buffett, our good old friend, at 129 billion dollars. So. The reason I want to give you this list, again, if you're interested, you can just go Bloomberg Billionaires and they give you the top 300. I mean, you can, it's fascinating to see what industries they are from. But the reason I want to do that, you see those names and we get curious, how did they get there? And why um, they've been able to achieve that while the masses do not. And as I mentioned, my interaction with some of the uh, people that I met, you know, some of our guests that we've had, uh, I have 12 findings. So if uh, you like, I can start uh, sharing that. If you need a break, we can do a break and do it after. It's, uh, it's up to you. Uh, well, sure. I'd love to take a little break. And uh, before we start, because we're, yeah, we launched our advertising and sponsorship uh, program yesterday. Right. So this would give you an example of doing a brief uh, commercial with us. We can put you in the lineup and uh, about every 15 minutes, which is perfect timing, Ramin, uh, we throw out some uh, advertising and commercials. And if you were interested, for the first 30 people who advertise, we're going to provide a heck of a deal uh, just to get our sponsorship and advertising up and running. We already have some incredible sponsors uh, that support our broadcast, like Bell, Sirius XM, uh, Home TV. Um, we have Kojiko coming on board. Uh, we just have like a, a beautiful collection of uh, sponsors that support us already. But we wanted to provide an opportunity where if you have a small business, you have a product, maybe you have a book, or you have an upcoming event, and you'd like to get it out there, We'd love to use the show platform as a way for you to do that. And then everybody wins. So for today, it will be snowflakes flying up in the air and practice what you could say in 30 seconds. I did this while I was traveling last month because I have a system in my radio, in my car for listening to great tunes. I played great tunes all the way up and all the way back, but they would break for ads. And one was just a 30 second musical break. So while that break was on, I was practicing what I could say in 30 seconds. And it's pretty challenging. You have to really uh, hone it down, what it is you want to put out there. But I think we'll do one minute breaks, uh, 60 second breaks, because they're a lot easier for people. So here we go, the snowflakes in the air. Okay. And this, this could be you. Introducing Veteran House Alliance International Monthly 50-50 Raffle. 
Purchase your ticket today, link on display, and have a chance to win cash and help a great platform supporting veterans. Welcome back, everyone, to Money Matters here on the Today Show. It's Tuesday, and um, our illustrious financial guru is with us again today to talk to us about the 12 qualities of a billionaire. And we just finished that list of who they are. I'm just a little sad that there's not a woman in there. Um, we need to break that barrier. Um, we know that there are some women who are close, but uh, not way up there like that. All well, right. There's, there's Waltons, you know, I mean, from Walmart. Uh, yes. They Helen. are few yes. that they are, but uh, yes, I agree with you. They are, you know, no, obviously, Oprah, Oprah Winfrey, course. for instance. Yeah. And so totally. we do have, but we need more, definitely. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> All right, Ramin, over to you. Take it away oh. there, man. So the first one, I, it really stood at me when I, as I said, I'm speaking with them and they're, they are ordinary people. You talk to them, you would never know that they actually <laughs> they have billions of dollars or worth of wealth. And uh, uh, we had one guest that, that I spoke with him and, you know, he came in, he was our main speaker. He had his cowboy hat, his cowboy boots, with his jacket, talking comfortably. It was like, wow, you're talking to your buddy. And that's amazing. So that gives us comfort knowing that, you know, they're human beings. There is no this super gene was injected to them. And that was comforting. Some of them have humble beginning, but many of them also had the value of, education some of them had you know the parents were affluent so those do make a difference i don't i'm not going to disregard that when you think about bill gates of the world or you know zuckerberg of the world they did have affluent parents and they did have you know they could have had good education if they wanted to but they're ordinary people they i mean it's just amazing you would never know they're not flashy majority of them so i love that quality so that gives us comfort knowing that yes it is possible for all of us. It's just about that habits, little habits, belief system. So that was number one observation I had. They're ordinary people. Number two, which was amazing that it was pretty common. And I studied, obviously, like Warren Buffett. And uh, when you, you, you think about one of my, uh, you know, uh, hedge fund managers, Paul Tudor Jones, that I follow. And they actually invest in themselves. They are a constant learner. And when I say invest in themselves, I'm not talking about toys. Or anything. They are constantly reading books. I know Warren Buffett reads sometimes with Charles Munger. They would read five or six hours a day. The first two hours of the day, that's what Warren Buffett's day starts with reading what's going on. You know, it's his age. He still doesn't feel that he's there with all the experiences it had. Life constantly changing. So it was amazing how they actually value. We talk about self-care. They value themselves. And that's another big difference because majority of people think about if I get to this point, I will do this. There's a lot of ifs and conditions. They are, they know where the value comes from and it's within themselves. So that's number two. Number three, they are constantly, they're curious. They're always looking for something and they are, that's what keeps their mind uh, always sharp because they want to know what's going on. And it comes from, again, constantly learning. Number four, and this is so important, and I've, I've found the value of that, and I know you have, is time. Time is their biggest asset. It's not about the money. It's about the time. So one thing I noticed, again, we are at dinner. These are little things that I, I was picking up, like with the, one of, you know, actually the few of the guests. It, number one, they don't like to talk on the phone a lot. You know, they are not on social media that, you know, checking their Facebook account or Instagram, how many followers they got or what is it, you know, the latest cat YouTube show or 
time is an element and they like to text rather than actually call because text is a lot easier within seconds. But one of the things that during the dinner, I would notice like we sit down and, you know, the hostess comes or, you know, the server will come. They were very decisive. They knew exactly what they wanted. There's no diddle daddle. Oh, what is this special of the day? Or what is this? They are very decisive. And because of that, they are good delegators. Because time, and again, I mentioned it in the opening, you know, you got to equate time with value. Not money, not price. It's value. It's our life. Number five, and that's another big thing. We, we always think they're genius, geniuses, um, and we can go back to Fords of the World, to Elon Musk of the World. Elon Musk is obviously, he's very intelligent. They, they, the common thing they do, they surround themselves with smart people. They know how people, and that's again comes from delegation. Um, you know how we, you know, the old St. Jim Browns, you know, you're the product of the five people you're surrounded with. And mm -hmm. they are always learning. They're, they have their specialty. They know what they're good at, but they also know what they're not good at. And that's another big key that, again, we can apply in life. And as you can see so far, this is a number five. They are simple things that we can apply in other aspects of our lives. But you know what? They're very good on the application. And that's where majority lack um, number six and this was it was wonderful because I, again I've seen it billionaires make billionaires they don't set up they're not there to have an empire they create this organization and they share that so you will see for instance you know we just saw like Microsoft had two billionaires in top 10. Google had or Alphabet had two billionaires in top 10. So a lot of these organizations, uh, we go to apples of the world or large organizations, they actually create other billionaires. So um, one of the differentiation I also have to say right here is it's the business side of things. When you think about millionaire, again, we've had many of them. People think of real estate. Oh, they're going to be wealthy. Yes. But real estate doesn't really make billionaires. Real estate makes you millionaires. You know, you can have properties and you will keep on that mindset. So real estate maybe make other millionaires, but billionaires is about business. That, so we've had some wealthy real estate, but they actually set up as a business, not just going buying properties or building. They actually were taking major life-changing projects. So that's the difference. So it's not like, let's just go buy real estate and become billionaire. And that doesn't happen. So that's what billionaires create other billionaires. Number seven, and that was also very important, is they are very focused. They know their strength. They don't have 100 different things, juggling things at the same time. They find the thing, they focus on it. Although, you know, like uh, Church Branson of the world, you know, when we think of Virgin Atlantic and all that, you know, he has like 365 different organizations. I don't know how he juggles it, but, but he started like one project at a time and then he manages it. But when they have a project, they focus on that one thing. And this is another, uh, the number eight, is a key to success. Again, I share with uh, our, especially our uh, younger generation who are up graduating is they want to go in business to themselves. They're entrepreneurs. They want to start a business. You know, you don't start a business not knowing what the problem is. All these billionaires, if you go back to their history, they were problem solvers. They found the problem and they came with the solution. And they were very focused on what they were doing. And that's how they created this whole wealth. Number nine, they own up to their mistakes. They're accountable. 
it's funny that one other thing, uh, I'm not saying 100%, but majority of people that at least I've been in contact with very successful, you know, ego is out the door. It's amazing sometimes how when we have lower self-confidence or self-value, our ego is the biggest. When we don't know a lot of things, we are the one who give the biggest advice to everyone in our surroundings. It just gives us that um, that value, which is a false value from outside. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. but they're very good at owning up to their mistakes. Um, number 10, and this is another huge thing that it's sometimes it's difficult to digest, but it is they know how and when to use leverage. Because when you think about all these billionaires, you would think they, they are proud of what they've done. They are 100% owner of what their businesses are. They're multi-billionaires because they own these companies. Well, I got news for you. Someone like Jeff Bezos of Amazon, he owns only 8% of the stocks of the company. Elon Musk owns 13%. Wow. So what they have done they have learned to uh, leverage using other people's money to succeed in their company. So I give you one example. This is again for maybe our finance students or graduate students. So I come up with a business idea and I have this pride. This is my baby. This is my empire. Till I die, I'm going to have this. Well, I'm probably an entrepreneur, but I'm not a real business owner, 100%, because if I'm thinking of expanding my business, I have to go above and beyond the thresholds. So what they do, they gradually sell their shares. So they bring in new capital. With that new capital, granted, they lose part of their ownership, but that increases the value of the company immediately because when the new money is injected, there's more capital. And because of that new capital, you have higher valuation. So let's say two years later, we are bringing a new investor with a higher valuation. Your company is constantly growing. So all of a sudden, now you have multiplies. And that's why they're not shy about not owning everything because they are in a business. It's not a love affair in a way of, oh, this is my baby. I'm going to hold it the rest of my life. And then what? They look at the succession, they look at the continuity, but that leverage is huge. And I think that's what it's important to take into account. And that's why I said, it's not about the ego, it's about its business. And they like to um, make a difference in the world. And I talk about problem solvers. Look at around you, the most successful things we just talked about. Microsoft is in almost 90% of you know, laptops. And they come with the iCloud. You talk about Amazon. You go around the globe. Everybody knows about these. If you Facebook, 2.92 billion subscribers around the globe, which uh, the largest one, 350 million in India. So people around, you think about smartphones like Apple, global. So they have solved the problem and they're global. So they... If they would have said, if Steve Jobs said, no, it's only me and I'm going to use my own money, and they will never succeed where right. they are. So, and how are we doing time wise? I got two more. We're doing time. great. No, that's fine. We've got, uh, are we on number? Just let's do 11 and 12. Perfect. And we'll take a break. This is that. another big one, which, which is, again, it applies in life, but we talked about great investors and someone like Warren Buffett. They understand the difference between positions and growth. You know, they have all the money in the world. They have billions of dollars. And we think about, well, they have it in cash somewhere seen in the bank. No, believe it or not, less than 5% of their assets are in liquid assets in cash. They think about growth. What is the next project? How are we going to make a difference in the world? So... Some of them, yes, they're extravagant. They have car collections. But majority of them, every penny that they invest or they, they spend or put somewhere is about producing something more. 
a productive money. So it, we will be amazed to see some of majority of them actually they're very frugal with their money. They're not cheap. They're frugal, and you know when you think about Warren Buffett still living in the house that he had 50 years ago, or driving the same truck, or um, you know IKEA founder. You know he was still. You know I, I'm not going to go that far. He was traveling economy, but uh, you know you still can enjoy life. You have to have quality, but everything they do is not about possessions and showing off. Is how we can make a difference. And that's again, it's very hard to for average uh, uh, person to grasp because the first thing, you know, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy that, I'm going to spoil myself. Well, yeah, they do have the quality of life, but the idea is the growth. And number 12, again, this is for a lot of entrepreneurs, it works, is they take risks, they don't play it safe. And that's why they get rewarded for that. One of the things that I've learned with a lot of these successful people, they love to fail quickly. It's not about <laughs> not failing, but let's fail quickly and get out of it. So if I made a mistake, I accept it and get out. That's why I mentioned about ego. They have no ego. And as I mentioned, they love it. Okay, if it's gonna something's gonna fail. We don't want to suffer through it, so let's do it. So those are, at least from my point of view, those are the 12 things I, I, I found out, I've shared uh, uh, with you. Um, I'm sure there are many more, but uh, this was uh, the first impression I got, and I think everybody deserves you know, to be wealthy. I mean, we are. We, we have abundance in the globe, in the world. We have abundant food, abundant money, you know, it's up to us to go out and grasp it. So right. that was uh, my 12 steps. I love it. And I have something to say about every single one of them. Beautiful. That's what I thought <laughs> would be great to have conversations. So. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. And um, I put a big star next to a couple of them that I need to do right away. Um, so we're going to take a break and this would be an opportunity for any of you. If you have a small home based business or you have a book or you have a product or a service, maybe there's an event coming up and you want to get the word out. Well, then use our platform to help you do that. And uh, myself, along with my co-hosts and our guests, we're all here to endorse that as well. So you don't just get an, uh, um, an ad that's out of context. And I talked about this last night at my team meeting. You know, um, we want our sponsors and our advertisers to integrate with our themes. And so on Monday, we have self-care, self-worth, self-empowerment. And so if you're in that industry, that's where you need to place an ad because people who are interested in that are watching that show every week. Uh, Tuesday is right here with uh, Dr. Ramin and we're talking finance. So if you're in the financial industry, any aspect of the financial industry, um, you may want to put an ad here. I'm thinking of a bank that um, an indigenous bank that I'm going to approach um, to sponsor our um, money matters. Uh, Wednesday is wellness. And there are lots of you out there with wellness products, alternative care uh, modalities that maybe we need to know about and we don't know about and we're not going to find out about Thursday, special communities. So we feature veterans, our indigenous community, our disabled community and anyone else that has a community that wants to be here. And that's a perfect opportunity for you to put your events up, uh, what you've got coming up, like if you've got a suicide walk coming up or you've got a fundraiser coming up, uh, this would be the greatest place in the world to put that out. And then on Friday, it's rather a fun day. So if you have some, kind of like a funky business or you do things for fun, um, you know, maybe you make these amazing earrings or you've got this would be the place on Fridays. Then of course, on Tuesdays, we have the press box coming up in an hour or so and anything to do with sports. Well, wow, you know, you got a really special soccer ball that's, uh, you know, uh, autographed there, Ramin, that you would like to put it out there and, and I auction do, it actually. Off, right? <laughs> This would be the place. So uh, we have lots going on. And so this is a little tip on we're going to do one minute segments, though, because it gives people lots of time if they have something they want to show or 
So this is when we would do it. So here we And the Lord, my God, he answered me. And this is what he said. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that ye may run that readeth it. Habakkuk 2.2. 2. Now you go and live your dream. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching Money Matters here on the Disability Channel Tuesday with myself and Dr. Ramin Modiri. And uh, today, uh, Ramin shared with us the 12 qualities that he observed while in the company of billionaires. Awesome list. I love it. So um, I have a story. I just read it a couple of days ago. Everybody knows uh, J.D. Rockefeller. He owns Standard Oil. He was one of the very earliest millionaires in the country. And uh, at 53, he developed stomach cancer and he couldn't eat. And he would have his chauffeur drive by the Astoria, no, the Waldorf Hotel. And inside was this magnificent restaurant with the best steaks in New York and cry in the back of the, show, of the uh, limousine because he couldn't go in there and have a steak at his own facility. So he was given a certain amount of time to live. And so he thought, I better start doing something with all this money I have. So he built some foundations and he started um, uh, supporting these foundations with his dollars that he had earned. And um, guess what happened? He started to heal from the inside out and he did not pass away till he was 98. Okay. <laughs> So sharing is caring and giving is yeah. living, I would say. <laughs> so. Right. So when you talked about ego, I would say up until 53, he had a lot of ego because he was one of the youngest people too, to call, to accomplish a lot and um, in the money department. So, yeah, when he let go of that ego, I like that. When you talked about investing in self, uh, I would like to just suggest and get your opinion on this. Um, there is no arrival time. You don't take a workshop and you're healed and you've arrived. Right. I've had clients over the years who, who have said that to me. Oh, I took the workshops and now I'm okay. Only to come crashing down three years later. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about that? There's no arrival time on our learning. I think it's when we're finally dead. Maybe we're going to learn more than do. I don't know. Over <laughs> No, I, I totally agree. That was a big common, again, a uh, common trait with all of the successful, and especially the billionaires. And you look at some of the interviews they made. I mean, you look at Elon Musk, who's brilliant, and he studies. He want, he want His vision is going to Mars, for instance. He already knows we are going to be there. You know, it's not a hope. Or it's like a belief system. And he studied all the you know the scientific papers and he so the mind is constantly stimulating and i used you know charles munger was 99 years old um it was uh warren buffett's friend he was still reading a new book he loved science fiction and he would read things because it stimulated the mind and that's what you know our body changes every 24 hours a lot of our cells organs they renew we do too but the problem is it goes back again to that ego, thinking that we know it all. But that also, uh, I think we discussed it last week, a couple of weeks ago, about people who have dementia or, or they have Alzheimer's. They found out people who are active, the mind is active, whether they play music or they learn. Actually, even they found out like, playing piano at later life, it expands a lot, you know, the life. Um, and also that the, the mind uh, puzzles 
reading, you know, these are all important. And that's because our body constantly is growing. So mm -hmm. but it's the hunger for knowledge is never ending. And one mm -hmm. of the things, uh, again, I have a little difficulty and then go back to our younger generation with the technology, with this artificial intelligence is that shortcuts. You, you know, reading a book, I still think is the most joyful thing. But when you everything is really juiced up for you in like one page, 100, 200 pages in what it loses its essence. It's great for time, but what is the reason to learn, to mm -hmm. expand and build a foundation? So, mm -hmm. yes, that self, uh, you know, learning, but also constantly learning is huge. Mm -hmm. And it's a common trait. Again, you would think they have billions of dollars. What do they need? They got all the advisors in the world, all the smart people. No, that was great. So. Wow. I'm just thinking of a time when um, this couple, they were interested in our workshops mm -hmm. for couples. And they were close by, so I invited them over for dinner. Because he was resisting and she wanted it. And you know how it goes. So um, they came for dinner. And... Uh, he was very resistant because they hadn't done any personal development work. Right. And I find people who are afraid to do their own work on themselves are the ones who really need to be doing it. <laughs> so anyway, they were, they were resisting, you know, well, you know, and uh, I said, well, you know, the decision is entirely up to you, but we're talking about your marriage here and you have children and you have grandchildren on the way. And I would think you would want to preserve that legacy for them and and you guys to have, you know, you've been together a long time and, and you just need a little push, a little, you know. So he turned to me and he said, well, how much money have you guys invested in your relationship? And even more important, Lori, how much money have you invested in yourself? And without even a hesitation, this was years ago, but without a hesitation, Ron, my husband says, uh, $1.23 million so far we've invested in her. <laughs> he knew exactly because, you know, I didn't, I didn't object to uh, finding a way to get to a $15,000 uh, through the door uh, workshop or a $5,000 summit in New York to find out how to work with, with the media um, you know, and when you start adding that all up, so I just said, you know what, I'm a million dollar woman and I hope it shows because I too am always learning things from other people. I learn from you every time we talk and I write, I write down what you say because these are things that I don't know. And like you said, a professional, I know what I can do really well and can, I can guarantee but I also know what I cannot do. So that's the, that's the design of a professional. So your thoughts on that, that self-investment that, and there is no arrival time. What we do in the world is just one small piece of everything. We're, we're not the end, we're not the, the end all and the be all. We're just one small piece of the puzzle. The disability channel would like to thank our existing sponsors. We really appreciate the support and kindness from the BIAs across the GTA, Ontario, Canada, and our friends in the USA. We love making new friends. Thank you for supporting our existing employment programs. No, I totally agree. No, I, you know, that brings me up what exactly you said. A lot of, uh, again, talking about billionaires, they actually have different mentors. Yes. And I've worked with a a while back, it was a famous mentor, you know, they made a movie about him and, you know, his time was very valuable and, you know, he was worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And he had a mentor. He said, I have three mentors. I have a sleeping mentor because I cannot sleep at nights and I need. So he knew his shortcomings or the things that he needed. And it goes back again. There's no ego because what it is. It's that equating time equal value because they don't look at things on prices. They don't look at things on the money side. Money is just a tool. 
Mm -hmm. They look at things, ha, huh, that value that I'm getting is multiplied. So if right. I have a mentor who's going to help me to find myself, that's going to come back to me 10 times. Oh, and it yeah. goes back to, I mentioned about, again, our um, younger generations, that volunteering is one of the most amazing rewards if it's done with the right intention and heart, that it will come back to you tens of times. And some of the time places that we volunteer, they become your mentors because they see the value in you and they're willing to invest in you. So mm -hmm. don't go with this tunnel vision. Oh, how much is my salary? How much I'm going to make per hour? Mm -hmm. Life doesn't work that way. And the same thing with investing in ourselves. It is something that it comes back over and over and over and it never ends. So, mm -hmm. yes. So I have a current example. Mm -hmm. And but this current example is, you know, us being on the show. Right. All right. So what are the chances that uh, I was in a, the cosmetic industry for 12 years and it was all about, you know, wardrobe, hair, makeup, right. the whole nine yards. Right. And this this is an old story and I, I've told it before. But when you're talking about that investment. So at one point in time, uh, I was just getting started and they were the, com the, the a group of us wanted to bring in this makeup artist from Hollywood. So from Hollywood to Halifax, that's a long way. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how much are we going to have to pay for this guy? And they said, well, we'll depend on how many of us participate. And um, he's not cheap. So it ended up costing $350 to go to the weekend TV makeup artistry workshop, how, learning how to do TV makeup, all that. I went, oh, whew, I don't have that. And we had to have it like in a short time, you know, a couple of days. I said, gee, what am I going to do? Well, I had a beautiful sofa and it was silk mainly. It was gorgeous. I paid tons of money for it. And I had a girlfriend who wanted that sofa so badly. So when you talked about taking risks, okay, I called her up and I said, you know that sofa that I have that you really love? You can have it for $350. I paid $1,500 for it in the 70s. So 80s rather. So if you want the sofa, you can have it for $350. She came right over. She got a truck. She came over, gave me the cash. I put the cash in so I could go to that weekend training. Well, the next day, the very next day, the Monday, I was being interviewed on a cable television show. And on the way out the door, the gal that was hosting the show said, oh, my God, your makeup is amazing. It looks beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I just did a course. I just did a whole lot of shadows and do, 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 do. She said, you know, we're looking for somebody. I said, you are? <laughs> she said, yeah, we need somebody to help the anchor women and the hosts of the show do their makeup. And she said, I think it's a $10,000 contract. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the job. <laughs> and... <laughs> And I went, wow, okay. So I turned my $350 into 10 grand overnight. I phoned my girlfriend up and I said, I want my couch back, my sofa back, and I'll pay you $1,500 for it, the amount that I bought it for. And she said, all right, I'm bringing it back. So, <laughs> and that's the kind of crazy things that I did. But you see those things all, I'm still using those skills 40 years later. I do my face every morning before I come on the show, you know, and I know what to do. So it's amazing to me how what we learn along the way, you're going to, that's something you're going to need down the road. So go for it. When I have people say to me, oh, I don't want to take a workshop. I don't want to go there. Well, go where? Aren't you the most fascinating thing you've ever studied after reading thousands of books and watching tons of movies? And aren't you, Ramin? Like, I'm the most fascinating thing I've ever studied. And I'm still learning about myself. Over to you. Absolutely. No, wonderful <laughs> story. Yeah, so much <laughs> truth in that. So, right. Great. Yeah. Um, 
this past weekend we were out camping with friends and um, she works in a very busy um, bar and restaurant and uh, like a little casino. And uh, we came up with a business idea because in my town, there's no public transit and we don't have really good taxi service. And sometimes when people are wanting to go home from the bar, they're not to be drinking because they've been drinking. They shouldn't be driving. And they either wait and wait and wait for a cab or there's no cab at all. So when you mentioned entrepreneurs or problem solvers, we sat around the campfire and figured out how we could provide a really good quality uh, inexpensive taxi service for the town. Create some jobs, lease some vehicles, hire some dispatchers, and away we go. But not only for uh, drunk drivers, uh, also seniors who need to get to the doctor. Um, you know, there's all kinds of reasons people need cabs. And so we have one little cab company that's, you know, pretty slim pickings, I think. So there was a business idea. All right. The- I, Around I the campground. Let's get the. Is let's that, get, uh, is no Uber or Lyft in where you are? Well, yeah, but you know, if I'm if it's two o'clock in the morning and there's no really solid good cab company because we don't have the population. We've got about eight thousand people. Right. You know, it's uh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and people like local people doing things, right? So it's kind of incestuous that way, you know. <laughs> If they know it's somebody in town that owns it, they'll support it, right? So, right. yeah, we had restaurants here that never went down during COVID because they're family owned and people supported them no matter what. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Well, I always own up to my mistakes. <laughs> I've done that for years. I was I was intrigued, though, with what you shared about billionaires make billionaires. That's one of the things that I put a big star beside. And surrounding ourselves with smart people. Well, we have some pretty incredible people around us right now, don't you think? We do, yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, from no people to who we have right now is amazing. The day is set. Join us October 12th, 2024 at Kerrigan Arms for our next fundraiser in honor of veterans, the Invictus Games in British Columbia, Canada, and TDC Employment Program Enrollment. For more information, email us at info at the disability channel.ca. So that's all I have to say about that. Um, ego out the door. Yes, that went a long time ago. Yeah. So there you go. There's a few of my stories. So maybe I'm in the category. Now, here's the question. Here's the billion dollar question. Okay. If I can connect and know that I participate in pretty much all of what you shared, I have to ask myself, why am I not a billionaire? If I have the same ingredients as billionaires and I have the same level of attitude and intelligence and all that. So this is my question to you, Dr. Ramin. Why am I not a billionaire? (laughs) (laughs) What's holding me back? (laughs) You know, that actually, that's a, a, a very valid question. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things, again, we've noticed is it, it was not luck. So it's not the luck. Although, as I mentioned, there's quite few, if you look at those, you know, the top 10, they did come from a pretty, you know, middle class, upper middle class family. They did have good education. There was some strength from that point of view. It gave them that uh, confidence to go forward. Although if you look at their faces, if you think about Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Mike Zuckerberg, you look at them, you would think they're working at Costco or Walmart or somewhere. I mean, or back <laughs> in, a, in a, you know, working as a software engineer in somewhere, you know, or accountant, but, The idea is the timing of things, and they truly believed in what they were doing, but also the timing of things and the environment they were in. They put themselves in that environment. And if you you know recall again from Mike Zuckerberg's of the world to Steve Jobs to Bill Gates, they all quit school. They Mm -hmm. knew going to school was not the solution for them. 
So immediately they knew, first of all, what not to do, even though as a parent we would say, oh, my God, you know, son, I put you into this school or daughter, you know, I'm paying for this or, um, you know, with Steve Jobs, you know, his step parent, which has real parents. I mean, his parents, they every penny they had, they put into Reed's College his first year and he quit. He came back and said, <laughs> Mom, Dad, I cannot allow you to spend every penny that you have for education that I don't need. This is not. So what did he do? He didn't pay the tuition. He took, he took calligraphy. You know how you did the, yeah. and he took that. And that was a great thing about coding Macintosh. The writings came from that class, which was free class. He took at Reed's College, the liberal arts college. And he learned from that. It, that made him billions compared to all the boxed classes that he even paid a lot of money. So it's important to also know, you know, again, what not to do. Mm -hmm. But I think surrounding the, the environment that you're in, it's important. I mean, Bill Gates and his buddy, Peter Allen, you know, they were obviously in a high school, which was one of the only high schools that computers, you know, <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. It is also that's the little breaks that we get, but we right. all are capable. The other thing is, like Laura, I think it's that focus, and they were, you know, they were single. You know, this is what we're gonna do, mm -hmm. and and the rest is history. The same thing mm -hmm. with Jeff Bezos or Google's. Right. Um, right. I'll just. I know time is running. I'll, I'll share one little story about Google. I was in 1990 myself because I love information, tri you know, trivia, encyclopedia. I came with this business idea that I'm going to start a 1-800 number and people can call and ask any questions and I will find the solution for a fee for them within 24 hours. And that was the, the, the business idea I had because I love, you know, um, finding answers and solutions. And then if students had anything, they needed to do in an essay or they had a question about something, they would call me and I would do that. So that was my idea of a business. But here comes Google with the technology. I was going to get back them in 24 hours. They're doing it within minutes. So, right. so it was, that was a problem, but they were obviously ahead of me with the, the married the technology i was one person but they so sometimes we are ahead of the curve but we don't have the right tools and we have to mm -hmm. learn and that's where the networking comes and yeah. that's what being in the right environment and with mm -hmm. the right people plays mm -hmm. an important role but you will be a billionaire and i think that's our vision you know yeah and, well it, the thing is um I, even though uh the and here's when we're talking about mindset even though the cash may not be in the bank i have never felt poor right okay so i've always thought rich that's always you know and it had nothing to do with how much money was in the bank account that didn't have any in impact on how i knew mm -hmm. uh, i could do anything or be anything or have anything i've always manifested lots of stuff so today we'll manifest the billionaire ship i love that thank you <laughs> all right <clears throat> our time is up it goes so uh, quickly ravine yeah. oh my goodness so um we'll be back together next week and uh, thank you everyone for watching today yeah. we had some live yeah. viewers and uh it was really uh really great information and i'm going to focus on the two or three things that i put a star beside and act upon them so all right so bye for now everybody and thank you uh, talk bye. to you have soon. a great week yes you bet